Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. After our adventure in the Canadian wilderness last week, we're going to make another journey to the eastern front of World War II. And we've got another debut game up today as we play Tank on Tank East Front from Lock and Load Publishing. Our goal varies with each scenario, but we'll detail that as we move, once we move over to the board. Before we do, let's take a look at the layout of the various units. As you can see, we've got Soviet and German units, as I mentioned in going into World War II. Kind of the scenario simulation there. So we've got the T-34-85 tank. We'll have a few of those in this scenario, but I'll detail our starting units when we move over to the board. So we've got a... the red numbers, the range is... So this needs to be at least three hexes away from the enemy to be able to fire at it. You need at least a 9 to destroy it, because that's the number in blue. Then the number in green is its move value. That will get complicated as we factor in various terrain. I think that's all set on the unit, so let's move over to the board. We're using a very vanilla scenario here, so we're going with the Cats on the Prowl scenario. Where we've got a, what looks like, grassland map, probably... I would say this, this scenario was set pretty early in Operation Barbarossa, which was the German invasion of the Soviet Union during World War II. So we've got the... So just to clarify what I've got here. So the units are actually the relevant... Well, I'll go through the units that are in the scenario, but the supply dump and command post markers that I've got here, those are the three hexes that we need to, that a side needs to control at the end of turn 10 to win the scenario, unless one side gets destroyed entirely, in which case the side that's, in which case it's basically just a game of last man standing. So either the side that destroys the other side wins, or at the end, after 10 turns, whoever controls those three spaces wins the game. All three of those spaces will start under Soviet control. The way we'll denote how control changes is these markers Actually, these markers in particular are double-sided. So if the Soviets have control, they'll have the Soviet marker up in the, the upper left. If they're German-controlled, they'll have the German flag up there. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our units. We went through the T-34-85. We've got one of those. <clears throat> we've got, as far as the Soviet tanks go, we've got several T-34s. We've got one, two... Three, four, five, six. And three of them are underlined with the HQ marker. So I'll explain what that means after I go through the actual tank. So the T-34 has a range of two, nine to destroy it, and two move. The underline means it's an HQ unit. So that when you activate this unit to move, you can activate anything around it. Units are only able to move and fire once per turn. Let's see, we went through the T-34-85. We've got the KV-85, which is which looks to be the Soviet heavy-duty tank. So, range of three to fire, need at least a ten to destroy it, and a movement of one. Then we've got the rocket infantry, I think this is. The Kachusha. This has a range of five, needs at least a seven to destroy it, and a movement of two. So that's everything for the Soviets. You can see we've got we've got a group of Soviet units each with an with the T-34 HQ around it. So we've got one over toward this edge of the map. We've got a group of the T-34 and a KV-85. Then the Kachusha with two T-34s is over here. For the Germans, we're deploying the Germans are deploying down in toward the south end of the map. So we've got a Panther, which is an HQ unit. We've got actually one, two, three, four Panthers. One of them will have a special property, which we'll get into in a minute. The Panthers have a range of three, need at least a 10 to destroy them on 2d6, and a movement of two. Then the Tigers have a movement of three, have a range of three, need at least an 11 to kill, but have a movement of one. So that's the heavy duty tank. Then we've got a Puma, which I believe is... Uh, do, do, do. Where? 
How is it not on here? Uh, SP Artillery. That's not it. Um, maybe it's... It's represented on here, but it's not showing anything on here. It looks like it's basically mobile artillery. So the Puma has a range of two, need at least an eight to destroy it, and three movement. Now, I did mention that there was an ace unit, which is this Panther. So the ace marker actually serves a couple of, pur couple of purposes for that unit. It means when I activate that unit to move, I can treat the I can treat it as an HQ unit, where anything around it can move. Additionally, when it's in combat, I can get the I can actually roll twice if I don't like a result, but I do have to take both I do have to take the second result if I decide to re-roll. So you might also notice some extra thumbtacks around here. Those don't represent anything. Those are just to help me hold the map down because I was one of the biggest problems I was having as I practiced this game is getting the mat to lay flat. So I finally decided to buy a bulletin board, put it on the table, and then tack the map down so it stays in place. With that, I don't think there's anything else we need to cover, so we're ready to... Actually, there is one more thing we'll need to cover, but I'll detail that more when we get... when it becomes relevant. So with that, we're all set to go. The Germans move first in this scenario, so let's start round one. Alright, so for the German turn one, I'm going to activate this Panther unit first. And remember, activating as an HQ means I can move the... means I can move anything freely. So I'll send the Tiger up one to E8, and then because it's on a road, I can actually move and spend an extra movement point to move it up to D7. Which, one, two, three, okay, I can't aim at anything there yet. Then the Panther, if I want to move it into the forest, it's going to cost me two movement points, and that'll be its movement for the turn. So I think we'll just move, we'll move into C8, which is a forest, and then the Panther will move one, two, and then I'll spend an extra movement point up to E7. Alright, the then for my second movement point, I'll activate this Ace Panther over here. So I'll move this Panther one, two, and I'll spin it. Actually, we'll move it one, two. Mostly so I can aim at the at this T34 right here if I have the shot, then the Puma will move one, two, three, then the, pan then the Ace Panther will move one, two, and then three because I'm on a, because I'm on a uh, road. So now we've spent two attack, so now we've spent two action points, so now we need the Dice Tower and Shot. We'll bring it there, we'll roll one D6. A 1 to 2 at this point will end the turn for the Germans. That's a 1, so the Germans' turn is over. Now, you may notice some of these units pivoting around. That pivoting is actually a very important part of this game because the orientation of units facing can potentially cause problems in terms of determining flanking fire, but I'll detail that more when it becomes relevant. So that was German turn one. Soviet turn one. We'll activate this T-34 to move as well. So we'll go... So this T-34-85 will move one, two, trying to get up close and personal with a panther. Then this T-34 will move one, two, aiming into the forest. Then this T-34 will move one, two, over to B5. Then it will pivot right about there. Then for Soviet action point two, Soviet action point two, I'll activate the, I'll activate this band. So this KV-85 will move here. Then we'll bring the T-34 over here up two to K-4. 
Then this T34 HQ will actually move two into J3, which is one of the towns that we need to control. And that will need to bring the Dice Tower right back in shot for the Soviets so that they can try to end their turn, so that they can see if they can keep their turn going. Once again, a one to two ends the turn for the Soviets. That's a five, so the Soviets get to spend their third action point. Let's see, what do the Soviets want to do? The Soviets, I think actually we're gonna get our first instance of combat right away. So we'll bring the dice tower right back and shot, but, where's my laser, laser pointers in my pocket? No wonder I can't find it. This T-3485 is actually going to take a shot at this Panther, try to kill the HQ unit. So the way we'll do that is we'll need 2d6, and we'll roll the sum of them. If the sum is at least is a 10 or greater, then that Panther gets taken out. Now, the reason they're aiming at the HQ unit is because the that will make the Panther and the Tiger over there basically defenseless and have to move on their own. Now, it could be a dangerous play to put that T-34 right in range of the Tiger, but... They'll still th theoretically need sizable rolls. If there was anything adjacent, they could fire as well, but since there's not, then the T-3485 gets, only gets its attack. Let's see, that is a four, so that panther is very much still alive. Then we'll put another die back in because the Soviets roll again. This time a one to three ends the turn. Which, that's a three, so round one is already over. And we've had our first instance of one of the units trying to fire, but we've come up empty. So with that, let's go to round two, and we'll get into a new round for the Germans. Here may be why it was so dangerous to bring that, bring that tank group up. Because we've got the T-34-85 right here, so I'm going to activate this Tiger to fire at it. Now, I could have the Tiger the, and both Panthers fire on it as well to get a modifier to my die roll, but I think I'd rather take, I'd rather just have this Panther, this HQ Panther, fire on it. So I will get a plus, is that a plus one or a plus two? Um... And I would have to check line. I'd have to check line of sight as well. But given that this is very open terrain, and I can trace, I can bring it down there. Yeah, I can definitely trace line of sight there. So I'm not too worried about. So I'm not too worried about the being able to open fire. So we'll bur so we'll have that Panther HQ fire on the T3485 as well. And I never find out found out if I was adding. Uh, okay, so we don't have any kind of flanking roll. That's where the facing comes into play. So basically, it's pretty intuitive, but if you're not in front of the, of the unit, so for instance, basically it would be anything here would be considered not flanking, whereas anything behind it would be considered flanking. And I have never found... Apply any... Right, for each firing unit. So I'm going to have the HQ Panther and the Tiger fire on this T-3485. So we get plus two. Boxcars. So this T-3485 is very much taken out. And then for the second action point, this Panther is going to fire on this T-34, but since the other... Tiger and Panther have already fired. They can't fire as well. So this roll is plus one, and I don't think... Defender occupies Town or Woods Hex. The Defender does not, so this roll is plus, is plus one. Six. 
six plus one is or seven plus one is eight, which is not quite enough to take out that T thirty four. We'll leave the dice tower in shot because we've got to roll again for the end of the turn. One to two ends the turn. Which that's a five, so the Germans will get to spend their third AP. Um, let's have the... <sighs> let's have this panther fire on the... Kachusha. Once again, we can trace... We can trace line of sight there. The Puma's got to pass through a hill, as does the other panther if I want to offer support, but I don't think... I don't think I will. We only need a seven to take it out. And we're plus one. Snake eyes, that'll be a whiff. And a one to two will... Actually, hold on. Before we do that, that panther... That panther was actually an ace, so we got a second shot. Ten plus one is eleven. That'll actually wipe out the Katusha. So that is off the board as well. Now we need to roll for if the Germans get their fourth AP or not. One to three says no they don't. That's a four, so the Germans will get to spend their fourth action point. Bring the dice tower out of shot. Well, I figure out what the Germans want to do. Um, I think they... I think the panther is actually going to... I think this panther is actually going to move up the hill and we're going to aim it... We're going to aim it down the hill. Actually, that is... That costs one movement point. Okay. So the Germans are all done there, which means now the Soviets get their turn to... And they're looking at a pretty bad situation. They're looking at a pretty tough situation right now, where they're looking at they've got two of their, they've gotten two of their units taken out. So they need to try to stem the tide. They're going to start by having this T thirty four take a shot at this Panther with a T thirty four HQ firing as well. Uh, can it fire? No, it can't fire. Actually, never mind that plan. Um. So actually, it will move into position. So I'll activate it for movement instead. I'll send the T-34 into the woods for defense, and then it will move one. Oh, that's actually a pretty bad idea. So it's actually going to... What, do I, what does it want to do right now? I activated for movement, so this T-34 gets to move as well, which is why I sent it into the forest. If I move it here, it's basically a sitting duck to try to get picked off by these three pan by these this squadron of German tanks. Uh, what to do? What to do? Maybe I put it in the way of it getting to of the Germans getting up to D3. Mm, I think a better idea might actually be to activate this T-34 HQ squadron first. So I'll send this T-34, one, two, three to flank this pan... Actually, that... I think that is actually is a flanking... No. It's not a flanking attack. I don't... No, it's not a flanking. And right, then this KV-85 will move onto the road... And then this T-34 will move one, two, three into that city. And then this T-34 right here and the T-34 HQ will fire on this panther that we know is not flanking. So we'll bring the dice tower back in shot. It is plus two though. I don't think that's a city space either. Nope. Needs at least a 10 to be taken out, though. Which 8 plus 2 is 10. That'll work. Alright, so the Ace Panther is gone. 
Then we'll put a, then we'll put it to a roll. A one to two ends the turn for the Soviets. That's a one. So the turn is so the round the turn is over, which means now we're about to start German turn three. So now on turn three, the Germans actually get the other relevant unit for the scenario. They get what's known as an airstrike. So the way these work is you have to spend, select a unit within four spaces of one of your units, a hex within four hexes in line of sight of one of yours, and spend two APs. So we'll place this in the target hex, roll a d6, spot it in the result. We'll do that three times. If we land in the original hex, we have to discard the airstrike without effect. But then we get to roll a 2d6, adding 2 to the roll. So I think the Germans will actually spend their airstrike and will target... We'll target this hex. So now we'll see... So basically a 1, 2... One, the next one goes here, two, three, four, five, and six. And if the last marker lands back here, it will get, the airstrike will get discarded without effect. So now we need the dice tower back in shot. There we go. There's the lid. All right, a six puts it here, which is potentially dangerous. We don't want to see a three on this. A four puts it here, which I think works. So we can go ahead and so we can roll for the attack. So we'll roll for the T-34 first. Well, the T-34 will be the only thing we roll for. I was hoping to get a an airstrike on this T-34 as well. There's a straight roll. We need at least a 9 to take it out. That's a 5. That won't do. And then there's the other two units are... The other two hexes are empty, so no point in trying to roll for those. So that airstrike was wasted. But we do have to roll like normal. One to two ends the turn. That's a five, so the Germans will get their third action point. And... Now I think that Puma will take a shot at the... This T-34, see if we can somehow take it out. We need at least a 9 to do it, which that is not. Then a 1 to 3 will end the turn for the Germans. Which that's a 2, so the Germans turn 3 is over. Soviet turn 3. Um, well, the Soviets are going to take another shot, take a shot at that Puma, which is basically a sitting duck here. So the Puma over here which can very much be fired on. Fortunately, it's not... Fortunately for the Germans, it's not a flanking attack, but they do have... But the Soviets do have two units aiming at it. The T-34 HQ and the T-34. Which a 10 is good enough to take out. Alright, then for their second AP... The Soviets are going to aim at this panther, but because the hill off hill requires plus one range, the the only unit that can fire at it is the T-34. This T-34 right here. The T-34 HQ, despite being two hexes away, has a range of would need a range of three to be able to fire on that panther. So only the T-34 that's down here can shoot at it. Which a six is not going to be good enough to hit. Then a roll of a then 
A roll of one to two ends the turn right here for the Soviets. That's a five, so they get their third AP. Um, this T-34 HQ is going to activate for movement. It's going to move one, two, which will also activate the T-34 for one, two. Does it move into our pivot? Yes. Okay, so now this T-34 is in flanking position, which could be a dangerous thing for that panther. One to two will end the turn for the Soviets. Or one to three, I should say, ends the turn for the Soviets. Which that's a six, so they'll get their fourth action. Their fourth action will be trying to take out this panther with his T-34. So the roll here is minus, is minus one because they're trying to fire into something that's in the forest. Needs at least a 10 to be taken out. Snake eyes won't work for the Soviets. So we'll bring the dice tower out of shot. We'll see that this lone panther is very much a sitting duck. German turn four though, and we they, the Germans really need to clean this mess up. So let's see what they get up to. For the Germans' first AP, they're going to activate this Panther HQ. So this Tiger will move one, two, and pivot there at a movement of one. But because we spent the entire movement on the road, it gets moving extra. Then this Panther will move one, two, moving on this T-34 HQ. Action two, we'll go ahead and promote the... We'll go ahead, and go ahead and promote this tiger that's up here. Uh, let's actually promote this panther. No, we're about to get that. That panther is very much about to be surrounded. So we're actually going to promote the tiger right here. Which will make it an ace. Then we'll bring the dice tower into shot because one to two, one to two will end the turn for the Germans. That's a three, so they'll get their third AP. Which is the Panther and the the Panther HQ and the Tiger over here are now gonna take a shot at this T-34 HQ. So they're plus two firing over open terrain. Ten, eleven, twelve will be enough to take out that T-34 HQ. And then a one to three ends the turn for the Germans. That's a four, so they get their fourth action. The Germans will fire on this T-34 right here. Once again, we need a minus two. We're firing at minus, actually it's minus one. So it's just a straight roll. Boxcars will make that one, we'll take that out. So the Germans have this side of the board under control, but the Soviets very much control the other side of the board. So with that, we are into the Soviet, into Soviet turn four now. So now I think they're realizing that they've got a little bit of a problem on their hands. They're going to start doubling over to deal with it. So they're going to bring this KV-85 over one, two, like so. And then for action two, he's actually going to take a shot at this tiger right here. And flanking is very much a thing. So he will be firing at plus one. So it's actually plus two. Needs at least an 11 to take it out. Seven, eight, nine won't work. We'll leave the dice tower in shot because the Soviets are going to be rolling for their turn, their first action, their third action point. One to two ends the turn. Seven, eight, 
which that's a four, so they get their third action point. Um, which will be to activate this T-34 HQ. The only question is which direction am I sending them in? Let's remove the dice tower for a second, but I'm gonna need it back in shot before too long. Um, I think we're gonna send this T-34 up here, which will probably end up taking out this panther. Then this T-34 HQ is going to move one, two, three, and try to help clean up the mess on this side of the board. So dice tower back in shot. One to three ends the turn for the Soviets. That's a six, so they get their fourth, they get their fourth action. Um, yeah, I think the Soviets are going to take aim at this Panther. Everything has got range, they've got line of sight, so we need at least a ten, and they're firing at plus three, actually plus four. Actually, plus three for, for firing units. That panther never stood a chance, so that panther's off the board. So we are at, so as we're about to head into turn, end of round five, the Germans have three units left on the board, so the Soviets, it looks like, looks like five. Let's see if the Germans can turn this around in round five. For German action one, they're going to activate the Panther over the Panther HQ over here. So the Tiger will move into D3, one, two, pivot in this general direction. Then the Panther will move one, two, three up here to turn on this KV-85. Then for action two, they're both going to fire on this KV-85. Remember, plus Let's see, one, two, three. Yep, the tiger can fire as well, and I'm actually going to use it to initiate the attack. So I get the ace benefits where I can... At the moment I can cuss and swear about... There we go. Had to lift the dice tower. So mostly I'm interested in being able to use the ace benefits of a reroll. Eight, nine, ten is actually good enough to take out this KV-85, so I don't need the re-roll. I will put the die back in, though, because now we find out if we get our, if the Germans get their third action point. One to two says no, they don't. That's a one, so the German, so German turn five is over, which means we're over to the Soviets. Let's see, for their action one, they're going to activate this T-34 HQ, which will move one, two, three, and then one, two. Then action two, we'll activate the, the Sloan T-34 down here for one, two, three. Then we'll bring the dice tower back in shot. Come on. Let's just do that. One to two ends the turn for the Soviets. That's a five, so they'll get their third AP. Let's see what they want to do with it. Is there much they can do with it? Uh, they can move this T-34 HQ for one, two, three. They can't fire, though. Actually, nothing can fire right now, so I think the turn is just over for them. The fourth action point will essentially go to waste. So now we're into turn six, and it looks like we're coming down to a final clash. I did forget to move to flip D3 over to German-controlled. 
So that's all handled now. And then looking at the map, so for action one, for action point one, I'm going to activate this panther to move two, e two. So one, two will pivot it like that. Mostly so I can fire at this T34 HQ, which will be action two. So I'll bring the dice tower into shot for that. See if we can make this three on three. I'm not holding out hope, but we'll find out. A three will not make it three on three. Right, roll a die, one to two ends the turn. That's a five, so we get action three. Which will be to activate this Panther, this Panther HQ for movement. So we'll move it, so we'll move this Tiger one, two. Then the Panther will move, I don't think we can stop in units with friendlies, units with friendlies. By units. Okay, so, right. All right, so that moves at a two movement cost. So I'll put this Panther HQ in the woods, but effectively the rest of the movement is lost. I believe the rest of the turn will be lost, I think. Yes, because that the Tiger, neither the Tiger nor the Panther HQ can shoot at this T-34 HQ. So yeah, the Moving the action points will essentially be wasted. So for the Soviet, so for the Soviet round, they're going to start by activating this T thirty four HQ, which will bring this T thirty four one two three up a hill. Then this T thirty four will move one two. Then the T thirty four will move one two three to keep unit adjacency. Then for action two, the T-34 HQ is going to fire at this lone panther. So we'll bring that, bring the dice tower back into shot. There's the other die. We need at least a 10 to destroy the panther. Which we don't get with a six. Let's see, and then since they all, since all of the units in this group right here moved, he fired. Actually, he could theoretically move to get a flanking position. So we'll try to do that, even though that seems like a pretty dangerous play right now. One to two will end the turn. That's a four, so the Soviets get their third AP, which they will use for the aforementioned flanking move. So they'll go one, two, three. Although the danger here is now he's basically setting himself up to get a, to basic to get attacked by these by these two units. So the rest of the action points will be lost. Then we'll move into German turn seven. For action one, this T-34 Tiger has very much left himself a sitting duck. So we're going to use the Tiger to initiate the attack. The Panther HQ is going to fire with him. So it's a plus two, and we get a reroll because the Tiger is an ace. So we've got the dice tower in shot for that. Five will get re-rolled. That would turn into a seven, which is still not enough to take out that T-34 HQ. But we are stuck with a second result. Eight, nine, ten is enough to take out this T-34 HQ. So now we're looking at a three-on-three -three fight there. 
That was action one. Action two will activate the panther, this lone panther, to bring it in with a, the other squadron. So we'll move it one, two, and we'll face it like so. Then we'll bring the dice tower back in shot because a one to two will end the turn for the Germans. Then are we getting set for a head-to-head -head fight to the death? That's the question. That's a five, so the Germans will get their third action point. Uh, that is a good question, but I think the answer is going to be no. So I'm going to activate this Panther HQ, which will start by moving the Tiger one, two. Then this Panther HQ will move one, two. And I'll have it face here. Um, I don't think there's anything else the Germans can do with the turn, so that's going to end the turn for them. So Soviet turn seven. I'll start by activating this T-34 HQ down here, which will move this T-34 one, two, we'll face it like so. Then this T-34 will move one to make sure it's able to shoot. And then this T-34 HQ will move one, two, basically setting up to try to pepper the Germans as they move along the road here. Then for action two, the T-34 up on the hill will shoot at the Panther, even without the benefit of being up a hill, it will have line of sight to be able to shoot anyway. Might be t Actually, I might be tempted to the Soviets do a field promotion here, and I think I will. I think I'll have them make a field promotion as well. So we'll give that T-34 up on the hill an ace marker. That'll be action two. And then if I put the dice down over here, bring the dice tower into shot. Uh, we'll put it there. One to two ends the turn for the Soviets. That's a six, so they will get their third action point, which now they'll use to shoot at the, I think I just hit it with the dice tower, but they will shoot at this panther right here. So they need at least a nine to take it out. The T-34 HQ actually can't fire because it's just out of range, but we do get a reroll on the T-34 ace. Which is not needed, because that will take out that lone panther. So three on two now, but the Germans are going to probably start racing for the town units. We'll bring the dice tower out of shot. I don't think there's anything else we can do here. So that will bring us into round eight, and let's see what the Germans are doing. For action point one, I'll activate the Panther HQ to move. So we'll move it one, two. Then the Tiger will move one, two. I didn't use the road march on the Panther, but I will on the Tiger to keep the two together. Now I've got an interesting decision to make because if I, fl if I attack, actually one, two, I could attack the question is, do I want to use a flanking or do I want the re-roll? I think I want the re-roll, so I'm going to use the Tiger to initiate an attack on the T-34 Ace. Actually, do I want to attack the Ace or the HQ unit? Um, that is a good question. I think... I don't think he's moving too much, so I'll actually attack the ace unit, because I think the ace is probably more dangerous. So both of them will fire, which means we're plus two, and we have a reroll. We need at least a nine to take it out, which is six, seven, eight. 
We're not flanking though, so we do have to count, account for that. That was one short, by the way. So the re-roll is even worse. So we do lose the attack action. I'll actually leave that. Actually, we'll move that out of shot. Because we are into Soviet turn eight. So for action one for the Soviets, we'll bring this T-34 up one, two, three. It won't be able to fire, but it can definitely get over here up to J-3 to intercept the Germans. Assuming we don't just take them out this turn, which is very possible. Not likely, but possible. The T-34 will reorient to... The T-34 Ace will actually reorient to face this way, and that does cost its movement. So we'll bring the Dice Tower back in shot. A one to two ends the turn for the Soviets. Which that's a four, so they get their third Actually, I don't know where I'm going with the Dice Tower because the Soviets' third action this round is they're actually going to take a shot at the... They're going to take a shot at the Panther HQ because if they manage to take it out, then that means they won't... That means the Germans won't be able to get into J3 in time and the Soviets will win the scenario. Plus, they might still have time to pick off that Tiger before it can get in there. So the Panther is a 10 which means they need to roll. They're using a T-34 and T-34 HQ both to fire at it. They're using the T-34 Ace, so they get the re-roll. All right, seven, eight, and nine won't quite do it, so they'll have to use the Ace re-roll. Eight, nine, ten will do it. So that will take that unit out, which is over on this side. So now they're looking at a. So now the Germans have a lone ace. But that is it for turn eight, for round eight. So round nine, and the Germans probably just lose the scenario here. But let's see if we can get this settled up. Just adjusting the dice tower slightly so you can maybe see a little better what's going on. So for action one, the Germans will activate the Tiger to move one, two using Road March. But they're about to step in front of a firing squad if I'm being perfectly honest. So for action two, the Tiger will fire at this T-34 HQ, maybe stopping the carnage. At least they have a reroll to work with. A, five, a six won't work. That will work even less. So that will actually do it for the Germans turn nine. Soviet turn nine could see the scenario end right here. Because for action one, we're going to activate the T-34 HQ for movement so we can turn these two T-34s. Then for action, is it adjacent that can also fire? If each piece is adjacent to at least one other firing piece, and all firing pieces... Okay, so... Alright, so for action two, I'm going to have this T-34 fire, and then because everything's in a group, they can all fire on this Tiger, and I'm using the T-34 Ace to get the extra reroll. Right. So I need at least an 11 to take out this tiger, but I'm attacking plus 3. That's a 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that tiger's taken out, the scenario is over, and the Soviets have actually won. So they would have won with the controlling two town hexes because they still controlled 
J3 and L5. But that is it for this scenario of Tank on Tank East Front. We're continuing a streak of debut games on the channel. Sunday we'll see the sixth game on my Tack Up Wargaming list take center stage as we play Hitler's Reich from GMT Games. As for next week, we're going to pay a visit to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter as we play Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.